Hey everyone, this is Steven Strawn at Cast Iron Cookwire, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. Today we're at Historic Atala, and this place has got a dozen or more antique malls. Today we are at Somewhere in Time Antiques in Atala, Alabama, and we're going to check out the cast iron. They have a few pieces in there, and I'm really excited to see what we've got. So let's check it out. Before we get started, I do want to say thank you to everyone that has purchased my product, Easy Beasy Cast Iron Seasoning. It really does make a difference helping keeping this channel going. Now, I want to say again, I appreciate you so much. So let's take a look at what we have in the store. Okay, there's one station right through here that has a good bit. Got a nice big cauldron. Quite a bit of uh, lodge, some BSR. Nice little enamel pot. Flat bottom pots, some Dutch ovens. We got some smaller skillets on the top. A nice little chicken fryer. That's a nice little chicken fryer. Another chicken fryer, some corn stick pans. And that is a cool pot right there. On the back side we have a little Birmingham stove and range square skillet, a number three Red Mountain, a lodge griddle, and here on the back side we have a little bit of a lodge section. Nice little lodge six cup muffin pan, got a cornbread skillet at the bottom, looks like a Birmingham stove and range. Okay, I'm going to pick off some of these pieces and just kind of show them individually. The one that was really interesting is they have a number nine hand-scribed BSR. And it is a red mountain. And we have here, now that is a nice little hand-scribed. It looks like they had a a few little issues with it. <laughs> you can definitely tell it is hand scribed. It is a nice piece. I would really like to have it. These are valued to up to $200 and he's got $199.99. The thing about it, when you go into a place and there's a lot of cast iron, you know the person who has all the cast iron knows what they have. So chances are you're not gonna get a surprise deal. You're gonna get probably what's expected to be the value of the piece. And that's what we have right here. But it is a very hard to find piece. Number nine, Red Mountain, Birmingham, Stove and Range. And it's got the wide pour spouts and the hand scribing. So this in here is a premium. And it's got uh, a really nice ring to it. There's no cracks, no issues whatsoever. Beautiful piece. I would say the value of this one would be about $200. Now it does have a little, little bit of a casting pit or whatever you want to say. Maybe a, something got in there, something broke loose. But that is not an issue at all. We have a little number three. And we were talking about Red Mountain just a minute ago. With the Century Series, you'll have the N-O dot with the descriptive lettering. With Red Mountain, you will only have the three and the mold number, and sometimes a couple of dots or an X or something just kind of, or just something denotating the mold. This is uh, $14.99, which is about right, and it's cleaned and ready to go. So uh, it's not a bad price. We're still talking about Birmingham Stove and Range Red Mountain. Evidently, this is the section for it. Here is a 7C. Now, the number of the skillet, the size, is the 7, and the C is the mold mark, the mold that it came out of. But here we go. This is a, a kind of a newer Red Mountain. It has the, the ridge around the edge, and it tells me it's one of the newer 
Uh, Red Mountain era was from the 1930s to 1950s, and there was a little bit up into the 50s. Century and Red Mountain ran together for a little bit. So this is probably going to be in the late 40s, uh, just because of, like I said, the smaller pour spouts is one uh, uh, denotation, and also the the ridge around the edge or the lip. Interesting thing I found out not too long ago. Originally, if you notice, the older pieces like the old Erie's and the old Wagner's and favorites, the heat ring is not inset, it's on the outside. And I've always said that the heat ring was there to sit down inside the stove eye. And the later pieces are actually that way, but the older pieces were made to sit on the outside. They thought it would make it a little more stable and less likely to warp. Uh, so the heat ring didn't sit down inside the eye hole of the stove, but they realized that it would make it just as strong if they brought the heat ring in. And then you had the heat ring matching the stove eyes. Uh, up until then, that wasn't the, the case. And by the way, that little number seven was $34.99. Now here's another, it's kind of hard to tell it. It's got two mold marks. It's got an eight and it's got a C and an A. And this one has a little bit of pitting. Of course, it is definitely Red Mountain. It is a little older because you don't have the lip around the edge like you have on the newer Red Mountains. This one here is probably made in the 30s and uh, like I said earlier there's two mold numbers on this it's a C and an A now they had a lot of molds so there were combinations a lot of people say why does it have two letters is it special well it's just because they had a lot of molds and the combinations helped them determine which one was which uh, so this one has some pitting and they have 1999 repeating around the outside the surface looks good for a user this in here would be awesome for 20 bucks continuing the Birmingham stove and range but moving on up a little closer into the century series now here is what they refer to is a cornbread pan or cornbread skillet now I didn't mention earlier BSR usually has a ridge, especially on their skillets. And they have this nice little teardrop hanger hole. And sometimes you'll find a little number inside the teardrop. I believe that is a designation of the shift because most of the time I usually see only one, two, or three dots. Occasionally you'll see one, two, or three. I've never seen a four. And I have seen one D, and I'm still not really sure what that D stands for unless it means day shift. But uh, this here is not one of the first ones. It'll say made in USA. This one's probably made in the late 60s, maybe even early 70s. The first couple of years, they had patent pending because when these were invented, uh, when they started it, they went ahead and put patent pending on them. You'll also see a six cup like this. It's called the 6BC. And uh, let's see, they got on this one right here, $24.99. I've sold a lot of these at $25 a piece, ready to use. You know, that's uh, another full price, but it's a decent price. Now here is a Century Series Birmingham Stoving Range. You still have the ridge on the handle and the teardrop hanger hole. But uh, on the back, if you can see this, the size and the description, it says NO.8. It's more descriptive. It even has the size and the increments in fractions, 10 and I believe it's 1 8th. You'll see that in Century. The Century series started in 1950 and continued on until 1991, until the company went out of business. So uh, they're not quite as, as expensive. Now this one right here, 
This one right here doesn't have made in USA, so it tells me chances are this one was made in the 50s, it's probably early 60s. They introduced the made in USA in the middle 60s, about 67, 68, 69, and uh, continue that all the way up until 1991. Now there will still be some, even in the 90s, it doesn't have made in USA. It wasn't a have to. The Trade Act was actually instituted in 1930 something, but they tried to really push it in the late 60s because of imports. And it wasn't a mandatory, most everybody done it by voluntary basis. And this one right here is $34.99 on the high end, but the value's there. Here's a nice little example of a made in USA. It's a Birmingham Stove and Range Century Series. Of course, we have the, the Ridge. And we have the small uh, pour spouts. We also have the very defined ridge around the lip. And this one right here is milled. Catch the light just right and you can see the marks. It is really, really smooth. It's a nice looking little piece. But like I said earlier, we have made in USA right across the top. And this one, you can see the descriptive lettering, number dot three. And it also has the size in inches and fractions. So this one right here was made in the very late 60s, early 70s. I don't think it would be made in the 80s because they quit milling these somewhere in the 80s. I'm not exactly sure where the date was when they quit milling these, but they was trying to cut down on cost because everybody was strapped and having issues trying to stay in business. So, nice little piece. They've got $15 on this one. And uh, it's full price, but it's worth that. I mean, I like the mill marks. That is very cool. Oh, by the way, we also have, with a little one inside there, as I mentioned before, if you can see it, as a designation, I believe, of first shift production. We have another made in USA. This is a little number five. And like I said earlier, this is a Century Series. Century started in the 50s and moved all the way up until 1991. We have the descriptive size, made in USA. And on the inside, we do not have any milling. This one here is a little rough on the inside and it's a little rough on the outside along with the defined lip. This one right here was probably made in the late 80s when they got to the point where they quit milling the insides and they were trying to cut their cost and produce as many as they could efficiently as possible. We also have a nice little number two inside the teardrop. Like I said earlier, I believe that is a shift denotation of the production. And they have $14.99 on this one. It's, uh, these are perfect for cornbread. If you're a, a couple, this is just right for two people. Probably the most common cornbread skillet out there, number five. Okay, we've looked at all of the Birmingham Stoven range on this wall, and here is a Wagner. Now, I see this one all of the time. It says Wagner's 1891, and people will see this and say, oh, that was made in 1891. Uh, it's not the case. Actually, it was 100 years later, in 1991, when they were celebrating their 100 years. This is a commemoration piece. They had an entire set, even a toy set, that was a commemoration. And uh, this one right here, this uh, grill pan, which is really nice. When you want to sear a steak, this is a heavy piece, and the grill marks look really nice on a piece of steak or a piece of fish. Uh, they made a griddle and quite a few skillets. They made uh, 
a Dutch oven and just a lot of pieces. It even has the seasoning instructions, which you probably wouldn't necessarily go buy it today. But nice piece altogether, $34.99. Pretty much the value of it. If you look in the books and you see this, that's probably the upper end of the value. Uh, but nice piece nonetheless. Now here's a little griddle. That's a, it's got a raised eight. They have $27.99 on this one. It says firm, unmarked. Now it's not a gate mark piece. It's got the, the inset heat ring and it looks like it sits perfectly flat and it's a good looking piece. And I'm telling you, the surface is perfect. It's ready to cook. He's seasoned these up and got them looking really nice. Not really sure of the maker, but a nice piece. And uh, $27.99, not terrible. It's, it's not outpriced. It's just right there at the, the limits of its value, which you're selling in a, a, a in an antique mall like this, you have a lot of pieces, that's what you're gonna do, so. Okay, here we have a Lodge corn stick pan. And they have $17.99 on this one. And Lodge, their corn stick pans has went through a lot of changes. This one here has the small holes. This one's kind of new. Of course, it has Lodge across the top. And it has this nice little leveler stripe right here that's so it would set level in the oven now the older pieces you'll see a little knob instead of a flat piece and then you'll start seeing the flat pieces come along later you'll see those with the, the wider hanger hole uh, lodge has been around for a long time so there has been a lot of changes in their corn stick design $17.99 on this one and it's nice and clean. It's got a good season on it. It's ready to use. Here we have another Birmingham Stove and Range piece. It's a number 10, Red Mountain, $64.99. It's not one of the oldest because of the, you can tell by the ridge and the smaller pour spouts. And you hear people call them small ears, large ears, but they're called poor spouts. And uh, it's one of the, the later Red Mountains, I would say 1950, maybe 51, 52, 53, before they discontinued their molds. This is a number 10. And like I've mentioned before, it doesn't have the description, just the size and sometimes you'll see a mold number. On the larger pieces, they didn't have quite as many molds, so you won't see so many of them with a mold number beside them. You'll just see 10 or 12 or 14, because you only have a handful, it's easy to keep up with them. But if you got a ton of them, you need the whole alphabet, and sometimes double letters. Now here is a cool piece. Now it's got some pitting. It's a Birmingham Stove and Range again. Got large pour spouts, but right here, we have hand scribing. And the hand scribing is kind of tough because this little B, it's like they had a hard time getting that B, and the eight is underlined. This tells me this is one of the older Red Mountain pieces. He's got $27.99 on it. Now it's got some pitting, but uh, there's people out there that only collects hand scribed Red Mountains. This would be a nice one for their set. Of course, eight is one of the most common, but the B, to me, I think is a little uncommon on the mold mark. Now here we got a cute little number three. And this is a lodge three notch. We have a notch at 12 o'clock, one at three and one at nine. They have $14.99 on this one, and it's not a bad price for a three notch lodge. Now we have another notable piece over here. We have a square skillet, Birmingham Stove and Range, and it is a century. And it has three dots on it, which I believe is a designation that it is a third shift production piece. 
they have $34.99 on it. Now with BSR, I've always mentioned that they have a ridge. Now the, the hanger handle on this one, the hole, is different than the you'll see on the skillets. The handle is elongated. You don't always have the most dominant ridge. Now the larger pieces, sometimes they'll be rounded, especially the 14s and the 12s. Um, sometimes they'll be really sharp, sometimes they'll be rounded. It's not a guarantee that they'll always have that ridge. But on the skillets, you will see that. And the chicken fryers. And uh, this one right here, he's got $34.99. Nice little piece. This is actually in Century Series. They did not make the, the square skillets in the Red Mountain. I mentioned earlier the corn stick pans made by Lodge. Here's one for $14.99. And... Uh, it's still got the round holes. Doesn't have lodge written on the outside. It's unmarked, but it is definitely a lodge. And we have the little bump right here as a leveler instead of the wide piece that we mentioned earlier. Of course, the bump looks like it's wore down some. But uh, this is an earlier lodge. Now here we have a Red Mountain chicken fryer. You can tell by the lid, it has the 8 and the B. Also have the uh, non-descriptive 8. Of course it has the 2. It's a G2. And you have the ridge on the handle. And with chicken fryers, you will have a smooth bottom, just like they have on the Dutch ovens. And the lid on the Red Mountain will be random. They don't radiate out in a straight pattern. They're just kind of random. They don't seem to have any pattern whatsoever. That is distinctive of Red Mountain. And the surface looks real nice. One thing I love about Birmingham Stove and Range is their Dutch oven, their chicken fryer covers, and their skillet covers are all the same. They all have the pour spout covers. So they all interchange. Now the size has got to be right. And this one right here, he has 99.99. And it says firm. And like I said earlier, he knows what he's doing. This is on the upper end of the value. It's worth that. Uh, but it's not going to be one of them lucky deals you're going to run across. You're going to pay what it's worth. We have another Birmingham stove and range. Now this is a Dutch oven. And a lot of people ask me, how do you recognize the Dutch ovens? How, how can you tell it's a Birmingham stove and range? Well, Birmingham has pour spouts on their Dutch ovens. And I mentioned earlier, the radiating, look at that even pattern. That is century series all day long. And right in the center, you will see the descriptive size which is number dot eight, ten and five eighths inch. And also we have made in USA on the bottom. And so this was made in the late sixties and it has a smooth bottom. I can find the price. This is 69.99 again full retail value but it is valued at that amount so nice piece right there we have another dutch oven and we're going to wrap this up here in just a minute this is another century series and you can tell by the radiated lines that go out perfectly in pattern the descriptive size Made in USA, just a decent pot altogether. $64.99. Again, full value. That's what it's worth. And I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up with this really cool pot. Now I don't know anything about these pots. It says uh Tamington Ironworks, cast iron kettle, $79.99. And it's marked 
Check this out. This is so cool. You won't lose the lid. It's connected. And it's uh, not really bad. It's got three little short stubby legs. And it's made where it'll fit right down inside the stove eye. That is cool. Okay, I paid a visit to somewhere in time a few days before I shot the video. And I did pick up this little piece right here. It is a number eight Birmingham stove and range. And the reason why I picked it up is because of this really cool mark. The eight is way up on the side. We have some dots, an X and a D, which is really interesting. The eight is somewhere around 7.30 or eight o'clock. We have two dots, which I believe is for second shift production and an X, which not really sure if it may have been a some kind of inspection mark. I don't know. And then we have a D, which is really cool. And there's no number at all at the six o'clock area. And it has wide pour spouts. It is a red mountain and it is a nice piece. Now it has a little bit of a casting flaw right here and you can see it on the edge. But to me that's not an issue. The cooking surface is beautiful. So this will go right in line with my Red Mountain set. I'm excited about it. And I think I paid $25 for it, which is a steal for a Red Mountain with the hand scribing and the cool lettering on the side. I like it. I like it a lot. And I got a good deal. And I'm happy. We're going to go ahead and call it a day at this point. I just want to say I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, please do not forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I promise I'll keep more of them coming. You can also follow Cast Iron Cookware on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check out our Facebook group. Uh, there's a lot of people there who love cast iron. I'll leave the description to all these sites in the video description of this video. Uh, you can also receive emails from Cast Iron Cookware. I try to send one out about every month just to kind of update you on things that are going on with this channel and just cast iron in general. And I just want to say thank you again for watching Cast Iron Cookware. Before you go, I just want to share something with you really quickly. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, 20, and 21, it says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I just want to say, share the word and be a blessing.